Hello, I'm Bob Harris. Welcome to Durman's educational series for industrial and decorative concrete flooring systems. On this panel, we are getting ready to demonstrate the installation of Purdue UMC, UMC SL, which is a self-leveling urethane modified cement. UMC is typically used in commercial kitchens and food prep areas where thermal shock resistance is required. In commercial kitchens, the floors are cleaned with either steam or hot water and immediately subject the surface to cold water. That is called thermal shock. UMC is designed to withstand this thermal shock along with other mechanical properties. UMC FL consists of four parts resin, hardener, aggregate, cement blend, and if choose to, pigment packs. In this demonstration, we will be showing UMC system with decorative quartz aggregate. Therefore, it's not really necessary to pigment the mix. The substrate preparation involves either grinding with a 30 grit diamond or shot blasting is usually what's done uh, in the industry to achieve a concrete surface profile or a CSP of about four to five. This panel has previously been primed and it has been broadcast with aggregate to create a profile that's uh, the equivalent of a surface profile of four to five. We're gonna go ahead and start mixing the UMC system. All right, we're getting ready to mix our UMC SL so as you can see here in the cans, we have part one, part two, and then our part three, which was originally packaged in the bag that we've now dumped into a bucket, um, is the cement aggregate filler that mixes into the system. So you're gonna always dump part one in first, followed by part two, mix that for several minutes, and then come, at, come back with your part C uh, and mix that for a full three minutes. A word of caution, you never wanna do half batches or decanter off any of the ingredients. This is all very specifically uh, weighed out in specific increments and it's relative to the amount of cement that's in the filler here. So never ever do half batches or small batches. Go ahead and just mix the full kits uh, so you know you get the consistent um, mix that's, that's needed for this to properly cure out. We've mixed part one and part two for roughly two to three minutes. Now it's time to go ahead and add the uh, cement aggregate filler. You can see that uh, it's important for us to wear dust masks because this is going to be some airborne particulate or silica going airborne, so you want to protect yourself from that. We're going to mix for uh, three minutes and then we'll show you the installation process. Okay, we've mixed all three components and we're ready to pour. Just a word of caution, this is a very rapid setting material. So if you're doing large uh, installations, make sure that you have your several buckets lined up. Also, um, there's a lot of installers that if they're working in the heat of summer or extreme you know, warm conditions, they'll uh, buy ice basically and package the part A and the B in, in uh, uh, bins of ice. And that's going to extend the working time for as much as five to six minutes. So. We're just going to pour out a ribbon and use a gauge rake. So 
This material will go down at roughly one eighth of an inch thick. Okay, so we've got it all uh, leveled out with our gauge rake, smooth, uh, leveled out nice. So we're going to go ahead and take a traditional smoothing paddle that you've, uh, you know, you've seen commonly used on self-leveling cements, um, and we're going to use that to, to run over the top of it. You can see how much pressure I'm applying here. I'm, I'm applying probably five to ten pounds of pressure just to get it to lay down. Keep in mind with this system, if you see a few smoother lines, like you can probably see in the camera, we're going to broadcast quartz aggregate to refusal, so I'm not super concerned about that. Okay, we've used our smoothing paddle. Uh, we've got it leveled out pretty nice, and now we're going to go ahead and, and broadcast uh, quartz, colored quartz aggregate. It's a color that's called Oceana, and we're going to broadcast it to refusal. Remember, no clumps. When it's all said and done, we don't want to see any shiny or slick, slick spots. If you see shiny or slick spot, spots, you don't have enough aggregate, so you're going to have to go back and keep uh, broadcasting the aggregate till there's no longer any shiny spots or smooth spots. All right, here we are on our self-leveling modified urethane cement panel in which we broadcast the blue uh, quartz aggregate. We're getting ready for one of our final steps to finish this panel off, and what we're going to do is vacuum the residual broadcast of quartz. So we want to make sure it's a clean surface, and then uh, we'll get busy mixing up our final top coat. On our self-leveling modified urethane cement panel, we have just uh, completed vacuuming up the residual uh, quartz aggregate that we broadcast. Now it's time to put our final, final application of uh, a clear top coat. We're going to be using the uh, Purdue P72, which is a polyaspartic sealer, very abrasion resistant uh, surface, very scuff and scratch resistant, also UV stable. So this is a really great product. Um, it's one part A to one part B. You can see that we've already pre-calculated our measurements. So we're going to go ahead and mix with the Jiffy Mixer for uh, two minutes with this product. And then once it's uh, thoroughly mixed, we're going to uh, dump some right onto the floor. Now, what we normally do because of the, the uh, height of the aggregate 
we want to just go to the tops of the aggregate. So we'll usually use a flat squeegee uh, to, to manip manipulate the material and spread the material. And then once we've uh, flat squeegeed the material all over the surface, we'll follow up with a back roll of, uh, with a 3 8 snap roller and uh, call it good. Like we've talked about in uh, past videos, we want to make sure that we don't have any material on the side of the bucket. So I'm very cautious when I dump into the bucket. Um, the material, if you hit the side of the bucket, that's unmixed material. And of course, when you dump onto the floor, that unmixed material could potentially not, not cure. So be very cautious about when you're dumping part A with part B. Okay, we've mixed our Purdue P72 polyaspartic top coat. Uh, it's time to go ahead and apply it. Um, you can use, they certainly make much larger flat squeegees. In this case, we're using a uh, threaded magic trowel, which works really nice. But we're going to simply pour a ribbon. And just for demonstration purposes, I'll show you. It just lays it down beautifully. I'm going to make sure we get into all the corners here. It's a good idea, if this is an actual room, have somebody else uh, cutting in the edges so we don't miss anything in the corners. But uh, a nice, tight, flat squeegee, like you see here. Get the material down. And then once we've uh, distributed all of the material on this panel, we follow up with the back roll. All right, we flat squeegeed our Purdue P72 down. Uh, it's laying down beautifully, by the way. It's just laying down super flat, and I'm back rolling. Um, we did, we did precondition our, our uh, 3 8 snap roller with tape so we don't get any lint. Um, this is one coat of the P72, and this is going to provide a really nice surface in terms of non-skid. You'll have a little bit of uh, abrasive there which is going to produce a non-skid surface. However, if you're doing a food prep area, say for example a, a kitchen, um, the fact that it still has a little bit of a slight texture to it, that could be difficult to clean. So for that reason, you may, uh, in situations like that, need a second coat. Um, generally, about three and a half to four hours dry time, and you would go ahead and same way, flat squeegee a second coat down if you wanted a smoother surface, which is going to be certainly a lot easier to clean in a food preparation area. Okay.